Thanks, I appreciate it. Okay, so we're going to start. Um, my name is Serge. Wow. Wow. I didn't even say anything. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll get booze at the end. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. So, um, so my name is Serge. Um, you know, usually I give pretty technical talks for people that have, have seen me speak. Um, this is a, a fairly non-technical talk, it's, and, and I want to have lots of time for questions and interactions. So um, I'm going to go through some stuff, and then um, I want to really uh, dialogue as much as we can. Um, again, you know, this is a, a casual talk, but it's a serious issue, um, which is imports in the United States. Um, you know, imports are controversial in our community, um, and I'm very aware of that. And um, I think you know this is this is why I, I jumped into this issue and uh, and why I'm speaking about it. Um, you know, about a year ago, when I started really taking this issue seriously, um, we had lots of imports in the United States. Um, most of them were really bad. Um, we had uh, lots of users that were wanting to import data, and uh, some of them, frankly, did it uh, without us. Um, we had lots of arguments on the mailing list about users who wanted to import data. Um, the users would, would go on the mailing list, to, uh, talk about imports. That usually they would say, oh, I have imported X. Um, they would get yelled at, um, berated, um, and it, it just didn't work out. The, the users didn't stop importing. It, you know, what would happen instead is that that user might just go underground and continue their work or another importer would, would take their place. Um, and then even people who were doing, you know, had the best of intentions were, were duplicating each other's work, if, if not in data, then at least in the tools that they were designing. Um, this, is a, this was a mess. Um, and we had people on both sides of this issue, um, especially in the United States. We had people uh, saying that import, imports are unreliable, that they harm the local community, that uh, this government data is, is uh, most government data is poor. Um, and, and I want to specify that people would just go to data.gov, find a data set, and decide that that was an authoritative source and they would import it. Um, and, uh, you know, people would complain about that. And, and it's true. And also, imports are hard to do well. We would get a lot of errors. Even if the data was good, um, the, the actual import process was done poorly. Um, you know, on the other hand, we had people making good arguments for imports. Um, the U.S. is quite large, um, and not only is it large, but um, unlike other countries, um, it's not very dense. So, you know, Europe is 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 uh, very densely populated. So uh, there aren't that many places that that um, there aren't a mapper. Um, and Canada, you know, it's it's. Uh, you've got great density in the cities, but where there's not a, a great number of densities, there's just not a lot of features either. Um, and, and there were arguments about what, why should we, you know, why should we be manually putting in what's already been surveyed um, by experts. Um, and, and then the last argument that I've heard uh, lots of times is that we need some seed data, that you can't just start from nothing. Um, even though it's been done in Europe, people just weren't happy with the, with the idea of starting from scratch. And so I seek a middle way. Um, we need a balance. Um, imports need to be uh, driven by the community. Um, imports need to be documented. Um, you know, we need to be able to learn from our mistakes. I mean that mostly in, in tools, but also in technique. Um, we should be collaborating and sharing code and sharing experiences. Um, and most importantly, um, imports need to be harmonious with the community. They, they, they cannot replace community. Um, they, they need to just work in conjunction with it. So I decided that um, I was going to take on this problem uh, in the United States, um, and we were going to. I was going to start a community um, of uh, a community members interested in, in imports and, and bots. Um, I was going to standardize the the bot process and the, or the import process, and there and thereby keeping the data quality high and enforcing that quality by the community, so that. You know, it wouldn't just be a back, bunch of back and forths on mailing lists that the community would then take ownership and start doing that enforcement itself. So I created the U.S. Uh, Import Committee with the blessing of the uh, OpenStreetMap U.S. And um, th this is the roadmap that we came up with roughly um, as a community. 
um, that we would bring imports um, you know, into the open, that we would create a welcoming environment for uh, people who wanted to do imports, and that we would create a, a working relationship with the data working group. Um, we would work in conjunction with them. Um, we would discuss um, uh, all of the issues that we came up with, and we would come up with best practices to address the issues that we found, um, and that we would document that through a set of guidelines and uh, create a set of tools. And uh, eventually, the last stage of this would be that we would require importers to follow those guidelines. Um, this is our roadmap. We're, we're not, we're not n anywhere near the end. Um, but this was the plan that we came up with uh, as a group. Um, and now, a year later, everything is perfect. Um, but it's, OK, so maybe not perfect, but it's, it's been improved. Um, you know, we're already discussing removing some of those bad imports that give imports a bad name. Um, and we're, we're going through them and, and, and flagging them for removal with the data working group. Um, at this point now, U.S. importers do have a place to go for information about imports and the process that they should be going through. Um, the imports that have been done since have been of higher quality. Um, and uh, the, the imports that are being planned are of if even higher quality. So what we've ended up with just in the last year is a better map, um, happier users, growing community, and, and most importantly for me at least, a growing community consensus around imports. People that were purely anti-import have now taken a slightly um, less aggressive stance because we've, we've, we've taken um, some steps to improve imports in general. So, um, oh, actually these here. Uh, success story, um, I think the biggest one is the Tiger name expansion bot, which is really the thing that got me involved mostly. Um, as people may know, um, when Tiger was imported, Tiger road names just you know have abbreviations everywhere. So it'll be like West 34th ST, or W 34th ST. Um, but OpenStreetMap prefers fully expanded road names. Um, and uh, a partial expansion had already been done on the West Coast. Um, and that expansion had errors. And so people were concerned. So I proposed uh, expanding the East Coast and, and then correcting the entire United States. And people were understandably scared. Um, and, uh, and so it took quite a bit of discussion to, to get people to agree that we should go through with this. Um, I released three versions of the code for review. Um, I got feedback at every stage. Um, we did a public code review. And in the end, after everything was done, after the code was, was implemented, um, I've gotten only positive responses. Um, and really, the only responses I've gotten have been people wanting more. Um, and I think that's a, a, huge, um, a huge step forward for showing how, how this process can be. And yes, it took six months, but that was going after something that had already been done improperly. Um, we've also had the Kansas building and address import in, for, uh, in several counties. Uh, Toby Murray um, is the point of contact for this, and he's been um, going, he actually went to some of these local county group boards and got the data from them. Um, he's been, he got the building data and the addresses, um, it did require some conflation, and he's created a nice conflation process and used Paul's script to, to help with that, which he'll be talking about in the next, uh, the next talk. Well, maybe he won't be. Um, but this import was completed, and there haven't been, haven't been any complaints about it. People are, are generally happy. Yeah, this is building outline data. Uh, it, no, it didn't have any building outline. Oh, it didn't? Uh, oh, that's right, 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 right. Merging onto buildings that were they were already in the data set. Sorry, you're you're right. Um, we did have a, a building import from MassGIS from uh, Jason Rem, Rem. I can't pronounce his last name, even though I'm French. That's really a shame. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, he imported all the buildings, but he he started doing this before we were we were fully engaged in the process of the committee. So he, he joined, and he's been a really active member, and he's going to work with us for the next step, which is getting those addresses properly conflated on those buildings. Oops. Um, and similarly, Ian Dees uh, started doing his building, Chicago, uh, Chicago building imports um, without us, but he has now joined 
um, the committee, and he's been really helpful. Um, and uh, you know, my feeling is, that especially with an active place like Chicago, this data will need updating, and so I'm sure he'll be he'll be part of that process. If he's here, uh, maybe he'll give a thumbs up, but he's probably in the other room. So um, let's talk a little bit about what the plan is, the short-term plan. Um, more Kansas data from Toby. Um, people have made several requests uh, to me for new Tiger expansion um, and uh, this mass GIS data. Um, we, we've also just in the last, uh, I think, week, we got a, a bunch of import uh, proposals for Florida, um, and that's water features and coastline and the land use. Um, and uh, just recently, uh, we, I've been talking with some people from uh, New York City and trying to clear up some legal issues around uh, the building and address data there, and that would be a pretty huge import. So um, I think you know, we've got a lot of plans that we're working on, uh, working through. Um, more generally, we have, um, you know, we want to complete these plans, we want to complete these imports, have a bunch of success stories under our belt. Um, you know, we're going we're gonna to do these the existing imports, we're going to make some more bot runs, um, and we're going to uh, complete the, an import guide, an actual documentation um, that, that users can, can refer to and follow that will keep updated. Um, that'll help uh, importers who want to go through the process understand the issues concerned and, ha and have something that they can work through. Um, I also want to start uh, getting a, a better handle on the imports that are in process, so creating some kind of tracking system so that we have a better understanding of where they are, um, who the point of contact is. We have a wiki, but it's, it's, I don't think it's, um, it's a tool that matches well with the, with the type of problem we have, so um, we need to develop that. And um, I think at the end, we also start to need to uh, engage the community in finding rogue imports, which we still have some, um, and bringing those um, importers into the process, or if not, then just uh, removing that data. I, mean, I think you know, this is the last step we need to do, but I think it's, it's going to be an important step. So um, if you want to import, um, Check the license of this data. That's the most important thing. We still we still get um, data that's imported that doesn't have the proper license. Um, ask yourself some hard questions. Um, you know, questions like uh, you know finding out the data quality in comparison to other data sets. Um, finding out does this data belong in OSM? We get a lot of proposals for imports that just are not suitable for OSM. They're too su um, you know they're too subjective. For example or their data that um, couldn't be easily uh, surveyed by a manual survey. Um, you know, we, we, there's, lots of there's lots of examples of things that don't belong in OpenStreetMap. Um, you know, get some community consensus around, you know, around this process, around what you're doing, um, and ask for help. Um, you know, not only uh, does the data need uh, consensus, but the tools around the import need consensus as well. How are you gonna get this data in? Um, ensuring that there aren't duplicates, or duplicates that there aren't conflation issues, et cetera. Those are really important, um, and that's again why we have the the import committee, you know, to help users through those questions, um, so they're not left on their own, so that we can therefore improve data quality, which is I think what we're all what we all want. Um, same thing if you want to run a bot, you know, uh, get get community consensus. A lot of we, we get a lot of bots that run now that are just someone decides that all tags for some feature should be different. Well, though that's not, um, just frankly, that's not gonna fly. Um, and uh, so, you know, build, get the community consensus around what you wanna change first, um, and then um, build the bots, and we'll, we, have, we have tools and frameworks for that. And, uh, and, and then, you know, provide tests and data to show that this thing is working as it's uh, supposed to work, or it will work as it's supposed to work, before you execute it. Um, so how can you get involved? Um, join the mailing list. Uh, we have a mailing list just for this. It's, it's not very high traffic at this point. Um, there's some really good high quality discussion. Um, I'm gonna have an import uh, birds of a feather session tonight at five. Um, I encourage anyone who's interested to come to that. Um, and we have a bi-weekly Google Hangout um, where we meet um, face to face as much as we can over computers, but we, we do meet and uh, we have about an hour long discussion. It's very informal, um, but I found to be really, really helpful. Um, and I think those are really the best ways to get involved um, with the group. 
And uh, with that, I, uh, I'd like to open it up for, I think we've got plenty of time for questions. So you, sir. Right, so we so the question was, do imports get sandboxed before they're imported into, uh, you know, into the main OpenStreetMap database? That's beyond the scope that we can control, right? So if an, if if a user decides that they're just going to upload a bunch of data to OpenStreetMap, there's nothing that we can do to stop them from doing that. Um, what we can do is we can see that they've done it and uh, take appropriate action, and that can be contacting the user. Um, you know, anything from contacting the user to request um, that they contact the community to simply removing it um, to more drastic steps um, through the DWG. But we, we can't control, we don't, we, you know, OpenStreetMap doesn't have a moderation model. Any other questions? Wow, okay, you, sir? Okay. Uh, the question is about, you're going to ask me a bunch of questions about the bot that uh, affects street names. Sure, so the, so, the, so the streets in the city you grew up in had a lot of abbreviations. Okay, yeah. Sure, so you didn't want to do, you didn't want to go through every single street in your, in your city, so. Right, so what, what you saw was that, that all the street names had been expanded, and that was the bot that expanded them. And the, yeah. Um, well, so so the question is uh, basically why did why did we do the bot name expansion? I mean that's the sort of the bottom line summary of your question. Um, and I don't want to sort of spend the entire time on that, um, although I I can. Uh, but uh, let me give you some short answer, and and, and hopefully that'll that'll uh, answer your question. Um, so the first reason we did that was that in OpenStreetMap the standard that we use is to always have expanded names in the database. Um, that is the way that, that is the preferred method of storing names in OpenStreetMap is always expanding them. Um, in other data sets, they may or may not expand them, but usually what you're experiencing when you go to the map is that the, that, that the names are contracted on render on the visual map, but they, but we don't know, or I certainly don't have access to Google's internal database to know if the roads are expanded in their database or not. Um, the question about, you know, well, gee, it, it looks ugly on the map is a is a rendering question, and I think it's a it's a good rendering question, and I think you know it's something that we can address as a community of how the map should look, um, but but it's a different question than how we store it in the database. Right, so, so your, your question, or I guess your, your complaint, is that, that having the full name of the directional suffixes or prefixes makes the name very long. And you're absolutely right that um, when, you full, when you fully expand road names, they can be very long. Um, that is not usually an issue except for the visual display. It doesn't really matter for the database. 
and there's lots of other reasons. I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of hold off on the questions about tiger tiger name expansion because this is more I think this is a more general talk, and you can certainly talk to me after the after this talk. Yes. Sure. Yes. I'm sorry, so when I'm talking about community, I'm, I'm talking about the OpenStreetMap community, the people who are editing OpenStreetMap day in and day out. Um, and, you know, I, I will admit I, I do have a, a slight bias toward long-term mappers, people who've been in the community a long time. Um, but, but when I'm talking about harmonious community interaction, I'm talking about the OpenStreetMap mapping community. Yeah. Yes, you, sir, in the back. That's right. So, so, so the question was, um, when you look at a map of New York City, you see lots of streets, um, but you don't see lots of buildings. Right, for very few buildings. Um, the buildings that are there have been, have been mapped manually by users, and um, you know, there are diligent users who go ahead and, and map that data. Um, and we are looking, we are talking to the government about whether or not we can have access to that data for an import, potentially. Yeah, there are some, so the question is what legal issues do we have? The legal issues are that, that although the data should be public domain, uh, it's, if you actually go and download the files from the government website and you look at their license that's associated, that's on the data file, it says, not for use by non-government entities, not for copying, uh, et cetera, et cetera, meaning, meaning that it is not suitable for inclusion in OpenStreetMap. That's the legal issue. People we've spoken to have said that, 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 that we should be able to get that corrected. Once that, you know, presumably once that's corrected, we can, we can go through a, a more technical discussion on what needs to be done to actually import that data. Okay, I've got one here and then one there, but I'll go for it. So I'm just gonna do you, sir, and then you in the back, and that'll be it. Yes, sir. Right, so the question was, what do we do um, with any, and I'm gonna make this a more general question, what do we do when there's existing data that conflicts with the import? Um, and in those cases, I think that's where we need manual conflation. Um, there is no, there is no um, algorithmic answer that we can have to what is correct. You know, that's what a surveyor is for, and, and that's a, a really good reason to go out on the ground and look. Um, and usually there aren't that many of them. There might be a dozen or a hundred. You know, there, I, I live in New York City. There aren't that many buildings that have been, that have been manually mapped. Um, let's see if I can get more than just that one guy. You, yes, you, sir, in the back. So, 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 so. So, yeah. So, right. So, so, so the, the two questions were: um, Can we create a moderation queue um, for moderation of of new data? And the second question was: How are we working with users to make sure the data stays up to date? Let me, answer the, let me answer the second question first. The, the answer to what are we doing to work with the users is that we are specifically re requiring as part of our process that the, that, that the import process um, have a conflation step as part of it and that that conflation step not care about the original source of data, right? So we don't, it shouldn't matter whether uh, a piece of data that gets, in, that gets imported that's already in OpenStreetMap came from a manual survey, came from an external data set, or wherever. Um, it's really important that, that the importer view the OpenStreetMap database as, as the canonical set, as one singular set of data that they're conflating against, and not as a collection of, of disparate data sets. 
um, and then we and we're requiring that they have some kind of process as part of their as part of their import process to address that. Now they may not have to do it, but they have to show that it can be done using the tools that they're you, they're, they're creating. Um, the answer to your moderation question is that that's outside the scope of this committee. Um, the, that that would be a fundamental change. To, I'm sorry. So let me just repeat the question again. It's what do we do? Let's create a moderation queue. Um, we are requesting that users show what the data would look like before it goes into the into the database. Um, so we're requesting that they show us what the data would look like and we can analyze it. But as far as actually creating a moderation queue inside of OpenStreetMap, um, that would be a that would be a major change not only technically but politically to the project and is outside the scope of of this committee. I'm not I'm, and I'm not even judging whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. It's just outside of our scope. So I just want to thank everyone. I'm sorry. I want to thank everyone for coming and uh, stay tuned for our next speaker.